Trafficking coke is nothing new, and Antwerp has been home to some big smugglers over the past few years. However, this is one that single-handedly changed the game. With his method, the chance of a shipment being caught decreased significantly. It resulted in him getting the fitting nickname, the King of the Switch. With this method, he would go on to smuggle kilos of coke and rake in millions of euros. But what was his method, and what made it successful? Let's find out. This is the story of Abdelila L. M. Abdelila L. M., also known as Abdel or Black, was born in 1985 and is of Moroccan descent, but grew up in Belgium. Little is known about his early life. He managed to remain unknown to the broader public. It was not until 2013 that Abdel would gain some notoriety after he was arrested for setting up illegal cannabis growing houses. He did this together with associates of his. Abdel had five active growing houses, and one was in the process of being built. He would rent the facility and recruited Romanians to set up the growing house. They would take care of the plants and harvest them. While preparing to build another three of these growing houses, Abdel caught the eye of Belgian law enforcement. They decided to tap him and had collected enough evidence to arrest him in September 2013. Abdel was released after serving a very short time of the sentence, but while inside, he may have made some good contacts, because after his release, he shifted from the cannabis business to the lucrative coke business. Together with other associates, Abdel would run a criminal organization with him at the helm. Along with others, this organization would later be dubbed as the Makrel Bender. For a year on end, the gang would go on to bring in large shipments of coke into the port of Antwerp. But there's something they did not know. Something was happening without anyone knowing, and it involved the downfall of one of the Netherlands' biggest players, whom you've definitely heard about. It was the end of Gwinnett Martha. Abdel could have never known that the hit on Gwinnett Martha would become a serious problem for him. Just to be clear, he was not involved in this hit at all. So how did this affect Abdel? Well, Gwinnett Martha was removed off the playing field in May 2014 after a hail of bullets were unleashed on him. As somewhat of a miracle, the bullets hit a lot, except the USB stick he carried on him in a bag. Police discovered this USB stick and rightfully so were intrigued to see what was on it. They managed to retrieve its data, and that's when the ball started rolling. Among the files were pictures taken of a computer screen. Upon further investigation, it was determined that these pictures were taken in the office of shipping company MSC in Antwerp. The photographer was deemed to be Nordin L.M., who worked as a planner at MSC. As part of his job, Nordin had access to information about when and where containers would arrive or leave. He photographed the movements of certain containers and sent that information to Morad L.K. Morad in his turn was a close contact of Abdel and was seen as one of his associates by the Belgian investigators. Just like that, police found out who was at the top of the chain, Abdel. As pure coincidence, Gwinnett's hits would fire back on Abdel without him having any clue. Together with his associates, he kept doing business and bringing in shipments. Meanwhile, Abdel was becoming known as the King of the Switch. Newspapers have called him one of the originators of the Switch method. In general, there are three common ways of transporting coke via containers. One is the rip-on, rip-off method. This method means that the coke is loaded in the port of departure and recovered in the port of destination. This usually happens without the sender or recipient of the legal cargo being aware that the container is being used for such activities. To load and unload the coke, corruption in the ports is important. Then we have the shipments of coke that are disguised or incorporated into legitimate goods. This is often more work and could require involvement of the owners of the legal cargo and corrupt dock workers. Thirdly, the most labor-intensive one is to transport coke via an in-container structure. Hereby, the coke is concealed in areas of the container such as the cooling compartment or within the walls or flooring. It's labor-intensive because the container has to be opened and closed perfectly in order not to raise any suspicion. But then we have another very interesting method which Abdel and his group utilized, the switch method. As you might know, containers from South America are frequently deemed to be high risk. Hence, these containers are subjected to scans and checks more often. With the switch method, however, Abdel would have a container with coke that arrived from South America docked near a container from Europe, which are subject to less frequent scans and checks, if any. When both containers are close to each other on the dock, 
Abdel would have his associates carry the coke over from the South American container to a European container. This European container was then either already scanned or not scheduled for scanning at all. Once done, this container would be picked up and brought to a safe location where the coke could be extracted from whatever it was shipped in. In between March 2014 and September 2015, Abdel and his organization did at least 10 switches that could be directly linked to him. Out of those 10, at least eight of them have been successful, and just two of them are known to have failed and ceased. One of the shipments was seized on June 18th, 2015, when MSC Lorena docked in the port of Antwerp and underwent a thorough check by police and customs. A container with a wrong seal number caught the attention of customs officers and was opened. Immediately upon opening, six duffel bags were found with a total of 220 kilos of coke. Dock worker Renzo Q and transporter Mike D, both associates of Abdel, were actually waiting on that specific container to do the switch method and transport it. Associate Nordin LM even traded shifts with his co-worker to work that specific day and was sat behind his computer to track its movements and see if it was okay to conduct the switch method. He noticed something was wrong and tipped off the rest of the group. At the end of September, the gang got very lucky after a container with 300 kilos was transported to a warehouse in Womelchem. The coke was extracted from the containers after which it was divided among several cars and transported to another place. Police arrived a fraction too late and found nothing but a few empty duffel bags laying in the empty warehouse. It did lead to the arrest of an associate of Abdel though, Giacomo P was arrested after further investigation. He was the man responsible for the switch of containers in the ports. Giacomo's arrest was the first of many. Belgian police agreed to have gathered enough evidence to arrest the entire organization and exercised 25 well-planned raids throughout Belgium in November 2015. One of the 25 raids was done at Renzo Q's house, Abdel's trusted dock worker. To their total surprise, police found enormous bundles of cash in bags and suitcases that were laying throughout Renzo's house. Stacks of 10, 20s, 50s, and 100 euro bills bundled together with rubber bands. After counting it all, it amounted to over a million euros. Renzo's wife responded shocked and said, I thought all the cash in our house was in my wallet. Well, that seems a bit unbelievable as there was also a significant amount laying in their closet. It became clear that Renzo was not just the organization's dock worker. He also functioned as their bank. He was responsible for picking up money if coke had been sold, delivering money if a new batch of coke was being purchased, and stashing it, all per the orders of Abdel. 25 raids were done, but absolutely no sign of Abdel. Where was he at? Well, right before the raids took place, Abdel left Belgium. For the past year, he had already been moving between Belgium, the UAE, Spain, and South America. Occasionally, he would come back, but he either felt something coming or might have been informed and decided to leave Belgium for good. In his absence, he was sentenced to eight years in prison by Belgian prosecutors in 2020 for the aforementioned shipments he was involved in. There was no sign of fugitive Abdel and it remained silent around him. Investigators had no clue where he was. However, his name would pop up again after the Sky ECC encrypted messaging database was hacked in the beginning of 2021. Messages that could be linked to Abdel showed that while on the run, he was still heavily involved in trafficking coke. According to investigators, Abdel orchestrated at least nine shipments with a total of 7,200 kilos, of which he pocketed at least over 40 million in profit for himself. Then, in February 2023, the news broke. One of Belgium's most wanted criminals was arrested. It was Abdel. Not in South America, not in Belgium, and not in the UAE. He was arrested during a routine traffic stop in Turkey after he had just come from a skiing trip. Surprisingly, he was not arrested because of being a fugitive kingpin. He was arrested because he had not extended his visa. He was deemed to be in the country illegally and was sent to an asylum center in Turkey. Belgium Minister of Justice Vincent van Quickenborn requested for his extradition. However, Abdel has the Belgian and Moroccan nationality, and besides that, Belgium has jailed a Turkish native that Turkey wants to prosecute themselves. Belgium has refused to extradite this person. This obviously makes Turkey less inclined to extradite Abdel to Belgium. For now, he remains in Turkey. He will be serving at least eight years if he is extradited to Belgium. And the evidence that will come from the Sky ECC hack could increase that significantly. This was the story of the king of the switch, Abdelila LM. As always, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, 
please consider leaving a like and comment sharing your thoughts and subscribe if you have not already. It takes a second and it immensely helps the channel. See you in the next one.